Welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is pre-calculus. We are working through the Domaino Waits Foley Kennedy book. We are doing a little unit on uh, parametric equations, polar equations. We may or may not do vectors. Uh, this particular uh, section that we're working on is about parametric equations. It's from section 6.3 of that book. And uh, parametric equations are basically a situation when you have separate equations uh, for x and y and each equation is about some third variable. Uh, typically it's t, like time. And so if you are familiar with a lot of physics applications, this is, this is no shock. This is actually something that typically happens in physics fairly often. Uh, for instance, you may have one equation that might tell you the horizontal distance. So let's say we have something moving at 30 feet per second uh, in, so in the x direction, and then maybe y is defined as something like uh, negative 16 t squared, uh, so we have something, you know, moving in the vertical direction, and you have a separate equation for that, that situation. So you might end up with something like this, and really this equation is talking about y, and this equation is talking about x, and both of those are in terms of time. So really all this is, is a situation where x is about a variable and y is about a variable and that third variable, uh, usually t, is called the parameter. There are really three things that we're going to do with this. Uh, one is we need to know how to build a table, two we need to know how to graph, and three we need to be able to rewrite equations uh, in, and eliminate the parameter. Uh, and that's basically rewriting y in terms of x instead of y in terms of t, etc. Okay, so let's, let's uh, do a little bit of work with this. We're going to do a couple examples. And so uh, hopefully you can see this okay because the grid's kind of running over the top. So this is x equals t and y equals 4 minus t squared. Now typically what we need to do is make enough points so we have a general idea of what the shape is. And so I'm just going to pick some values of t. Now t is usually time, but it doesn't have to be time. Uh, I'm going to go just start with like 0, 1, 2 and, and, and see what happens with that. And if we get enough out of that to make a, uh, a good guess at what the graph looks like, then Happy New Year. We're good. Okay. So all I'm going to do is substitute t values in for t. So if x equals t, well, so if t is 0, x equals 0. If t is 1, x equals 1. If t is 2, x equals 2. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? Um, so if, if we're trying to find what y is, well, again, put in t. So 4 minus 0 squared, 4. 4 minus 1 squared, 4 minus 2 squared. Okay, so if we were going to look at a graph for this, okay, let's uh, put a little set of axes here, and the axes are the same axes we've always worked with, x and y. Okay, worth noting then that there are a bunch of t values here, but I don't actually graph the t values. I really only graph the x and the y. So 0, 4, 1, 3. I'm numbering by ones. 2, 0. Okay, that's what it looks like right now. Now, if we were told a set of values for t, then that would give us more information. Uh, I'm going to suggest that I, because of this t squared, I, I really think this ought to be a parabola. So I'm going to put in just a couple of other values just to see what happens. So again, uh, x is t, so x is negative 1, and x is negative 2. And then when t is negative 1, well, negative 1 squared, again, all I'm doing is substituting in here. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. And similarly, uh, I get 0 for that. So as I continue to graph, looks kind of, this doesn't seem all that exciting. It's kind of like just looking at y equals 4 minus x squared. Whoop, I didn't write the minus in there, sorry. Well, if you notice, t is x. So if that's true, then I could do 4 minus x squared. In effect, I have just eliminated the, the parameter. Okay, again, the parameter is just that third variable, in this case, t. So there is no t in this anymore. And it looks just like y equals 4 minus x squared. Well, that was probably because this was just x equals t. And so there's no shock that that's what it looks like. 
Okay, so we've done our first problem where we did everything. So we made a table of values, we did a graph, and we eliminated the parameter. Okay, cool. Let's do it again. Okay, this problem looks exactly the same, only different. The big difference is this isn't just x equals t, this is x equals a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let's find some t values. Again, I'll start with 0, 1, and 2, and that's just easy numbers to start with. So I have 4 times 0, minus 1. I have 4 times 1, minus 1. So this is going to be 3. So that, again, all I'm doing is substituting that 1 in for t. 4 times 2, 8, minus 1. Okay. Uh, now I'm not going to substitute x values in this. I'm substituting t values in this. So 4 minus 0 squared, 4 minus 1 squared, 4 minus 2 squared. Okay. So again, let's do some uh, basic graphing here and see what's going on. And again, if I don't have enough information to see the pattern I expect or something like that, I'll just do some more. Okay, so negative 1, 4, 3, 3, 7, 0. Well, this certainly doesn't look like a parabola, and I'm still kind of expecting a parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my negative 1 and my negative 2, and we'll see if that helps us. Okay, but again, if we knew that t was time, and if time being positive made sense, and time being negative, like history, didn't make sense, then I would skip the negatives. Okay, and I might have enough of a graph already. Uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus 1. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 minus 1. I'm not going to make that happen on this graph, am I? Well, maybe. All right, uh, negative 1, uh, so in for t on the second equation, so 4 minus 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 4 minus, so this is still 0, okay, so again, I am graphing only the x values and the y values, so negative 5, 3, and negative 9, 0, looks kind of like that, so really, the the only thing that really changed is my x values were significantly different. Okay, now, so we've graphed, we've made a table, not in that order. Now what I want to do is write y equals 4 minus something squared. Now the question is, what's the something? Because I'm trying to get rid of t. Well, I need to know what t is equal to. Well, x equals 4t minus 1. If I want to replace t, I need to make this equal to t. So I'm going to add 1. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So t equals x plus 1 over 4. So x plus 1 over 4. Well, this is with the parameters eliminated. I'm really done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of solving here, or just a little simplifying here, uh, just so you see what it would look like. Because sometimes the back of the book, their answers don't look the same. So 4 minus, and I'm going to square this, so this will be x squared plus 2x plus 1, I'm just foiling, and 4 squared is 16. So y equals 4 minus 1 16th x squared minus 1 8th x minus 1 16th, combining like terms, Minus, this is 3 and 15 sixteenths, because the signs were different. Um, you could write that 48 plus 15, 53, 63 over 16 if you wish. Um, this is already way more than you needed to do. But please note that the parameter is gone, and this, this would be like in uh, general form. Okay, uh, this is fine, and again, I'm fine actually way back here. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to simplify it. I'm just saying the back of the book would probably write it like this. Maybe like that, but probably not. They probably don't do mixed numbers. Possibly a decimal. Okay? All right, let's do one more of those, and I think we'll call it good. Okay? Now, this one is a little more tricky, and that's because you need to think about what numbers make sense for sine and cosine. Now, this is not calculus. So theoretically, you could use degrees. The t isn't even really specified here. So um, let's let's start. I'm going to work in degrees just because I know that's more appealing to you. Um, 
So I'm going to just start with like 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. And then I'm going to use uh, like symmetry kinds of issues to continue on beyond that. Okay? And then we're going to play around in the calculator just a little bit. So uh, th this example is going to take us a little bit of time because we're going to look at it a couple different ways. Okay? Just pretend that's on that line. Okay, now I'm going to scale a little funky here because I know that uh, sine and cosine are always between negative 1 and 1. And so I want to be able to kind of use up more of the graph. I don't want everything just in this tiny little spot, you know. So I'm going to kind of blow up my scale a little bit here. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Remember the unit circle. Okay, and you got x, y values and all that kind of stuff. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, which I'm going to think of as 0 0.866. The sine of 30 is 1 half, okay, or 0.5. 45 degrees, sine and cosine are the same, square root of 2 over 2, which I'm going to think of as 0 0.707. For 60 degrees, the cosine of 60 is 1 half, and the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Again, that's 0 0.866. 90, cosine is 0, sine is 1. Okay, so what all I'm going to do is use these order pairs. So this is 1, 0. Uh, for 30 degrees, uh, I need to do the ordered pair negative, I'm sorry, positive 0.866. Well, here's 0.5, so 0.866 is going to be something like this. And then 0.5, so somewhere around here. Square root of 2 over 2. So uh, for 45 degrees, it's going to be 0 0.707. Well, it's probably somewhere around here-ish. And similarly on the y-axis, so it's probably somewhere around here. I don't know. Okay, uh, 60 degrees will be 1 half, and square, uh, 0.866, so probably somewhere, uh, let's see, this is 1 half, so above that, so I don't know, something like that, and then 0, 1. Okay, so far, it kind of looks like this, and, and again, I'm not perfect on here. Okay, now, if I keep going to like 120, the reference angle is going to be 60. So it's going to have the same values as this point somewhere around here. If I go to 135, it's going to have the same values as this point, only the x value will be negative, so somewhere around here. And same idea uh, for the next one and the next one. And for the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And what I'm hoping you're seeing here is ultimately the graph of this is really just the unit circle. Okay? Well, I want to show you something that I think is kind of cool. Okay? So what I'm going to do, oh, let's clear that out of there, and let's clear that out of there. And I'm actually going to go to mode, and just remember where we're doing this because you get into another class and you're going to be like, oh, dang, what did I do? Go into mode, and on this, notice where the cursor is flashing. In fact, let me make that a big screen. Okay? And we're going to change this to parametric mode. Now, we've probably never done this before, unless you saw me in a pre-AP little outing from your middle school or something. Okay? Uh, so we're in parametric mode. We've changed the mode on these before, uh, but not very often. Okay, now go to y equals and, and look at this. That is different because we're in a different mode. Now, if you recall, we were in, uh, uh, what we had was uh, x was cosine. And notice when I push the x button, it's now a t. So that x, t, theta, n button switches when you're in different modes. Okay? The y equals then, now notice the equal signs haven't highlighted yet because we haven't done anything in the other one. Ah, look at that. t. So these are the, this is the function that we worked with just a minute ago. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be 
in, uh, I'll be in degree mode. Now, watch what happens, though, when I go to uh, the window. The window is set up with T's, X's, and Y's. Now, if you notice, what we just did a minute ago was we actually went from 0 to 360, and because I'm in degree mode, that makes more sense. Now, the T step is how many values is it going to, how often does it do a value? So, in this case, it would start at 1, or start at 0, and then it would, uh, it would calculate an X and a Y. It would start at the, its next point, it would be 0 plus 0 0.130, and it would calculate an X and a Y, and then it would add that again. The, the smaller the T step, the more points it calculates and the slower it goes. That can be a little problematic. Okay, let, I'm going to leave it just like it is, and I'm going to push graph right now. Okay, and it's working. And it's working, and it's going to have a little jiggy-joggy because it's going to calculate like a million little points. And it doesn't work perfectly, and it's moving really slow, and I'm already tired of waiting for this. So I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to push the on key to stop it. Okay, I'm going to go back to window. And I'm going to change this T-step to, to 5. So now it's going to calculate the, and the answers uh, for X and Y every 5 degrees. Okay, so let's, let's hit graph. So that's real reasonable. Okay, not bad. I'm going to change my window. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to change it. What I'm going to do is change my X's to go from negative 1.5 to 1.5 and my y is from negative 1 to 1. And the only reason I'm changing it to these, uh, the screen's wider than it is tall, and so I want it to look right. And so I'm going to push graph again, and there it is. There's a circle that fills up the whole screen. Okay, now I need to talk to you a little bit. I talked to you a little bit already, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about the t-step issue. If I make the t-step too small, it takes forever calculating too many points. If I make the t-step too big, it's only going to calculate steps that often, those points that often. So, for instance, it's going to calculate for 0, for 90, for 180, for 270, and 360, and it'll connect them. And it doesn't really know what to do except to connect them. So watch this. So here's 0 degrees. Here's 90 degrees. Here's 180. Here's 270. Here's 360. And it just connected them. It didn't really know that it was supposed to do more stuff in between because that's just what we told it. Okay, So you need to calculate enough points to know what's going on. Now, we can actually be a little sneaky with this, kind of cool. Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do 120. And this is not what this graph should look like. But now look at that. It only calculated a point at 0, 120, 240, and 360, and it connected them. Let's do, I, I think this can be one of the fun things about this. Let, let's do uh, 120 again, but let's go to 720 doing it. I, oh, this won't matter. It just actually goes around twice. All right, so let me do this. Let's do, um, let's do something goofy. Let's do 135. Let's see, let's see what happens. Isn't that exciting? I did not expect that. That's funny. All right, so the moral of the story, be careful about what you do with this. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Sorry. Oh, I changed the wrong one. That's what happened. Sorry. Let's do this 135. That's what I wanted to do. Cool. Oh, I want to keep it going. Let's watch. This is fun. Let's go 1440. So that goes around like four times. How cool is that? But see, this isn't really what it's supposed to look like. It's, it's not doing enough points, and all it's doing is uh, connecting the ones it does. Okay, so you can see I'm having way too much fun. Uh, again, the issue here is really if you want an accurate graph, you need a T-step that's big enough to not take forever and small enough to uh, make a nice smooth graph. Okay? All right, well, parametric is, is interesting. Again, all it does is split up X and Y, and it puts them both in uh, equations that are about some third variable T. And we'll play around with this a little more in class. And thank you much. Sanford Flip Math, we're out.